Um, good evening and welcome to all of you as we are almost normal. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. So I'm so thankful. I'm really appreciative of the, uh, the youth and their families who did the meal this evening. And of course, the free will offering for that goes to offset the cost for going to Luther Park Bible Camp um, for our confirmation youth. And a special um, shout out and thanks to the sixth graders who are leading and participating in our worship this evening. So this is kind of their, one of their first forays uh, into doing this. And so they are, they are eager and ready. And so um, appreciate what you guys are going to be doing this evening and helping lead worship. So in confirmation, we have, I have kind of a rule. Um, we learn by doing. And so this is how it works. You know, like my parents, when they took me skiing for the first time, they said, they took me to the top of the hill and said, that's down, you figure it out. <laughs> We're a little more careful than that with worship. <laughs> okay, let us begin. So the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Amen. I invite you to please rise as we join in singing our hymn. Much we need your tender care. In your pleasant pastures, feed us for our use, your full prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. You have bought us, we are yours. You have promised to receive us, poor and simple though we be. You have mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, free gift of grace is Jesus Christ, the reconciling love of God, and the life and peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you, and you may be seated. Dear teacher of teachers, we come to sit at your feet. Tell us. We are thirsty of the water that you bring to us. We will never be thirsty again. We are hungry. Your word can fill our hungry hearts. We are searching for the words in your wisdom in your words of wisdom, truth, and more. Lead us to seek your living water so we will never be thirsty again. everyone who thirsts comes to the water and you that have no money come buy and eat come buy wine and milk without money and without price why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food Decline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. 
I will make with you an everlasting communion. My steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to peoples, a leader and a commander. Commander for peoples, see you shall all nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and Holy One of Israel, for he was glorified you. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John's, the fourth chapter. You, now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and uh, baptizing more dis disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself, but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee, but he had to go through Ceremon to, so he came to a Samaritan city called Sakar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob, well, was there, and Jesus tried out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was now noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone, had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, asked a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you will ask, have asked him, and he would have given you th living barter. The woman said to him, Sir, you have not bucket, bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you are you the great, greatest then, our ancestors, Jacob? Who gave us the well? And when his sons and his flock drained from it, drank from it, Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks from this water will be, will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in then a spring of water gushing up to eternal life eternal eternal life the woman said to him sir give me this water so that i may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water the gospel the gospel of the lord
And now, your Central Lutheran Church barely acquainted players proudly present The Woman at the Well, or You Gotta Meet Her. We take you directly to the well in Samaria, where the woman is telling her friends about the strange visitor she just met. He was right here, right here, I tell you. Yeah, right, the Son of God needed a drink. Ha 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 Aha, it's true, he was on his way from Judea to Galilee and decided to take a shortcut. Did you hear that the Son of God takes shortcuts? <laughs> he was tired from the journey and sat down by the well. That's when he talked to me. Why would a man talk to you? I tell you, he did. <laughs> Why would a Jewish man talk to you? That's what I asked him. He was a prophet. A prophet. If he were a prophet, he would have known what kind of sin you were, and he would have steered clear. He didn't seem to care what race or gender I was, or about my less than stellar history when it comes to men. He looked right at me and spoke as if he knew me. That's when he offered me living water. Living water? Living water! We try to boil the living stuff out of it before we drink it here. No, no, no. Living water. The water of life. Too many sheep upstream, all the water takes on a life of its own, if you get my drift. Ah! Ah! Okay, okay. So he offered you living water. What else did he say? He told him to go call my husband. Ha! <laughs> Which one? I told him I didn't have a husband. You got that right. Ha! <laughs> I told him I didn't have a husband, and he told me that he knew I had five husbands, and I'm not exactly married to the man I'm living with right now. He got that right. Uh, then he said the strangest thing. Let me guess. He got into a heavy theological discussion about the nature of worship. Uh, well, that's right. I asked him why the Jews say you have to worship in Jerusalem, and our ancestors say we should worship way up here on the holy mountain. And I suppose he said that God doesn't care where you worship. Exactly. He said God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. What's that supposed to mean? I don't exactly know, but it sounded good to me. I told him I know that Messiah is coming, and that when he comes, you explain everything. Then he said it. Said what? He said, I am he, the one who's speaking to you. Of course he was the one speaking to you. No, he said he was the one, the real one, the Messiah. Imagine that, the Messiah of the world was drinking from Jacob's well. Just now. Ha <laughs> The Messiah of the world, the one who, who is to come and proclaim God's reign came to you. That's what he did. Stop it. You're killing me here. He came to you, a sinner, a woman, and a Samaritan, to give you living water. Ha! <laughs> yes, yes, and he can give it to you too. And where, pray tell, can we find this living water? The living water is, the living water is Jesus himself. And Jesus said, those who drink the water that I give to them will never be thirsty. The water that I give to them will become an eternal spring of water, gushing up eternal life. I think we can give them another round of applause. Thank you to all of you that have participated so far. Awesome job. Thank you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So welcome to these 40 days of Lent as we begin on this Ash Wednesday. And over the next 40 days, not counting Sundays, if you count 40 days between now and Easter, you get more than 40, so we don't count the Sundays. Now you know. But over these 40 days, we are going to be um, joining in and exercising ourselves with the six disciplines of Lent. 
So they are part, and these disciplines are part of the church's ancient wisdom to help us to get to know Jesus. Accordingly, these disciplines are not always easy because they are meant to mess with us, push us, make us think about things, and change us. Do we really want to change? The answer to that is what the next 40 days seeks to answer. So the six disciplines of Lent are self-examination, repentance, prayer, fasting, sacrificial giving, and works of love. So tonight, on this Ash Wednesday, we begin with self-examination. So have you ever been wrong about something or someone? Usually, when that awareness that we've been wrong comes, it comes through our self-examination. And such can be very humbling. And such self-examination needs brutal honesty. So self-examination is a disciplined and fearless inventory of what is not right and needs to change. For instance, tonight we meet again this woman at the well in John's Gospel. Maybe we are wrong about her because she's a Samaritan. And if there was anyone who would ever not know Jesus, it was a Samaritan. I mean, historically, between Jews and Samaritans, there was a lot of bad blood going back centuries. But some things just need to change. There are many things that we get wrong about this woman at the well. First, she comes to the well at noon, and the brightest part of the day, not to avoid people. Rather, in John's Gospel, light is very important. Light means belief. It means faith. Something is about to change. Second, Jesus asks for some water from the famous well of Jacob, the common ancestor of both Jesus and this woman. But in Jesus, this woman is meeting someone that she has never, the likes of which she has never met before. And unlike all the male disciples up to this point, she listens as Jesus teaches her about living water. She asks questions. She's curious. Everything is changing. And then Jesus and the woman enter into a theological discussion. Jesus asks her about her five husbands. Of course, we immediately think this woman has some kind of past, or at least she's unlucky at love. But Jesus never mentions adultery and finds no need to forgive her for such. Hence, she's not the sinner that we think she is. So we get it wrong again. It is important to note that in the Bible, unfaithfulness mostly refers to the people of Israel worshiping or chasing after other gods. Thus, rather than husbands, Jesus is referring, perhaps, we think to the five gods that the Samaritans also worship besides the God of Israel. And then Jesus tells her that the God that she is currently worship worshiping isn't doing her a whole lot of good either. But now, standing in the bright light of faith and belief, she recognizes Jesus as a prophet who calls her back to faith in the one true God. And then amazingly, she becomes the first one of anyone to confess Jesus as the Messiah. Or in Greek, the word Messiah is Christ. Unbelievably, she gets who Jesus is. Everything's changed. She's now a believer. The light shines. She becomes the first in the gospel of John who starts telling others about who Jesus really is. And they believe here, all her Samaritan brothers and sisters God and Jesus has found her. Everything has changed for her and her fellow Samaritans because now they too believe these Samaritans who thought nobody was ever going to have them believe anything. 
So sometimes we need to examine our own faith life, have our own little bit of self-examination. In what do we believe most deeply? Are there those things in our lives that act like other gods, like money, or power, or prestige, or success, or athletics, or appearance, Or we simply think that we are gods unto ourselves and we don't need any other god to help us. Are we willing to do a little self-examination? So how do we know about whether we have other gods or not? So here's how. Martin Luther long ago gave us a God test so that we can examine ourselves. It's one question. So Luther tells, what is your God? And he says, a God is what we turn to in our greatest time of need. A God is what we turn to in our greatest time of need. It's like the commercial that asks us, what's in your wallet? Or what gods do you believe in? Therefore, dare we fearlessly examine those other gods in our lives? What do we turn to in our greatest time of need? When we open up our faith wallet, what's really there? However, the good news is that just like Jesus found this woman at the well, Jesus also finds us and reveals to us who Jesus really is. So Jesus now finds us in this time of Lent, these 40 days and these disciplines. Jesus finds us in our gathering, in our singing in our sharing together of God's word in the waters of our, of our baptism and in the bread and wine of Holy Communion and in just a little bit, the sign of the cross that's placed upon our foreheads. So welcome to this Lenten journey of 40 days of self-examination, repentance, yes. prayer, fasting, sacrificial giving, works of love. And these ancient disciplines is how we get to know Jesus and how Jesus gets to know us. These are the disciplines that are meant to mess with us, push us, and make us think about things and change us. And so we begin this evening, the beginning of these 40 days with self-examination, a disciplined and fearless inventory of what is not right and needs to be changed. Like the TV commercial says, what's in your wallet? So let's take a closer look. Amen. So let us join in our hymn. So we join in our invitation to Lent 
Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. So we begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. So I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, and strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, let us then continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. I invite you to please rise as you are able. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have, has, that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors and our prejudice and contempt to those who differ from us, we confess to you. Us, oh God. <clears throat> so our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and I will invite um, the sixth graders who will be in putting on the ashes. So as you come forward, they will come and make the, word, the sign of the cross with the ashes on your forehead with the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. There will be two stations, one for this side and one for this side.
Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. As we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need, O Lord, we are often stubborn and willfully ignorant of your guidance. Help us to examine ourselves, steer us back to your fold, and reassure us that your unconditional love never fails. God of justice, hear our prayer. And you love all that you have made. And you long for us to tend to it and, care, and carefully, as carefully as you would yourself. So endow us with your careful, gentle spirit and return us to the work of stewardship of this world that you have given to us, which you first entrusted at creation. God of justice, hear our prayer. And Lord, nothing can separate us from you, not war, nor dangers, nor death itself. As we remember our own mortality this day, we do so in the sure promise of your ultimate resurrection. God of justice, hear our prayer. You restore our souls and anoint our heads with healing oil. Bring all who long for relief into your secure pasture and into the wholeness of your family. And we lift up especially those who need your healing power. As we remember Bob Everson and all those for whom we pray in the quietness of our hearts, bring them healing and new life. God of justice, hear our prayer. And blessed are those who dwell in your house forever, O God. Draw all your saints together, both living and resurrected, into one great fold where we hear and know your voice and where no threat of danger may ever harm us. God of justice, Hear our prayer. All these things we entrust to your care, merciful God. Make our lives a part of the answer to our prayers, empowering us even in our weakness to serve you always. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And so the peace of Christ be with you always. So take a moment and kind of wave and shake, and if you feel comfortable shaking your neighbor's hand or your whatever. Just share the peace and those who are joining us online this evening. And uh, uh, so share the peace with them as well. And then as we receive our offering, which you left on your way in or you'll leave on your way out. And as we receive our offering, we pray. Let us pray. God, our caring mother, you love us even when we disregard that love and you remain in our lives with open arms, ready to welcome us back. We are grateful for your never-failing, always-present and unconditional love. Amen. So the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. How in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So with this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. So reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. And with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All who thirst, all who hunger, come and be filled with the goodness of God. So those that are assisting with communion, I invite to come forward. And there will be two stations and the ushers will direct you. Okay, no, just hang on.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. Make our, may our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may God, please rise as you're able. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you and grant you his peace now and forever. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, thank you for worshiping this evening. Again, thanks to the sixth graders who did an awesome job helping lead worship tonight. We go our way singing our closing hymn. Let us sing. Mm -hmm.